know, there's a chance we'll never get a vaccine, right? I mean, this virus is so smart. We may, just like HIV, we've been working for 40 years. So then you need to really think the, the next step, the next best step, it's not an antiviral, but this is monoclonal anti-neutralizing antibodies, which we've, we, by the way, have now developed with Mount Sino. Excited to see that we've discovered multiple monoclonal antibodies that have um, um, mic nanogram potency. Um, then the third thing, in my mind, is to create an ACE2 decoy. Uh, but I mean that by ACE2 decoy is to try and modify your body, actually. So that the ACE2, the new ACE2 that's secreted uh, as, as more affinity, uh, avidity and affinity to the spike than the current wild type ACE2, and it doesn't mess with your current ACE2 receptors. Yeah. I, I see those, and then finally there's the small molecules um, that can actually fit inside the pockets of this coronavirus uh, outside of round spike, uh, round S2 and inside. Those are the four pathways that we are going down um, but let's focus on the vaccine again. So now if you look at this vaccine, at all the trials, and sadly my concerns have been sort of borne out a little bit that unless you get the CD4 and CD8 T cells. Now what we discovered, which is very interesting, and we're gonna publish this this week, by the way, this week is we're gonna publish this, is that the wild type spike, when we take the wild type spike, and we put it either in the plasmid atom or in a adenovirus, and we either uh, transfect it with a plasmid, electroporated, or we put an adenovirus and infect it. When we infect the um, human embryo kidney cells, which is a human line, or we infect a, a, a dendritic cell of a human patient, that wild type spike RBD doesn't get expressed. You don't see any RBD on the surface of that. Where that is cell. It? Right. So that says, wait a minute, if you don't see that, that you're not going to get a potent B cell or T cell response. Uh, 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 uh. Not a B cell response. But as we know from cancer, what, what antigens do you, res what is responsible for the response to intracellular antigens? Which cell? So we need immunity. You, 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 yeah, but you need B cells C are for intracellular antigens. Right. You need C, C cells people. are for it. B cells are for the surface, right? So, but you need CD4 to, to help the B cells. You, you do. You help the cells. You need the B cells. You need CD4s. But do you need CD8? But CD8s, do you need CD8s for the B cell response? You need all of them. That's the whole point, right? Because you need this milieu, you need this milieu of the soup. Right. So, right. okay, so if a wild type spike doesn't express RBD and RBD is a neutralizing antibody, that explains why you're only seeing 40% neutralizing antibodies. If you look at the papers now that you're coming out in these human patients. And by the way, it's very dangerous to look at mice, monkeys. You've got to look at humans because the mice have different MHC1s, different MHC2s, and they have different. So you really don't, until you get this full milieu in the human population. Right. So the first thing is you don't see RBD and said, oh my gosh. So everybody's going off to spike because they're purportedly going off to RBD. So that's a problem. So what we've done, we've figured out why we've created a fusion linker onto the whole spike and we've exposed, um, we exposed the RBD. But surprisingly, when we, and we don't know, we don't, I still don't understand the science behind this. But when we add N onto this thing, this construct, the RBD exposed beautifully on the surface of the cell. We don't know whether because the N increases transcription or whether the N is somehow forcing exposure, but we're getting exposed RBD, huge exposed RBD. So, okay, so we've got a construct, at least for the antibody side. But you notice then when, when we took N alone, spike alone spike was driving cd8s very little cd4s n was driving cd4s <laughs> and cd8s so when the uh, la jolla group did the predictive modeling on the epitopes of the n and the and the s and the, and the entire covid it turns out that n and s are the b and t cell epitopes that's where the b and t cell epitopes are which means that if you then combine N with S, 
One, you expose the RBD. Two, you have now an antigen that will drive CD4. You have an antigen that will drive CD8. And when you have CD4 and CD8 to dig together, magic happens because memory cells could happen. Memory T cells could happen because that's how they would interact. And then thirdly, you would have a T helper cell to the B cell and you get very potent, hopefully, neutralizing antibodies. So that deals with cellular and um, T, T cell mediated immunity. But it still doesn't deal with IgA. It still doesn't do, do, do deal with mucosal immunity. So because we had an adenovirus that we can give multiple times, um, we then figured out, wow, we could lyophilize our adenovirus, which we've done, and create it stable. And create stable at room temperature. So we've now created an enteric coated adenovirus, same formulation. And now you can swallow it as a capsule. Get through the GI tract, um, let it release in the pious patches, or make droplets under the skin, just like polio. Um, uh, under the tongue, and these are three different types of dendritic cells, by the way. The dendritic cells under your tongue, the dendritic cells in the pious patches in your, in your gut, and the dendritic cells under your skin, all three different types of dendritic cells. So you, you ask me, the ideal vaccine for me is to have a sub-Q injection of N plus S plus an oral boost, and now we could become the Z-pack of COVID. <laughs> because we could then, then now the most critical test is to have then a test of immunity, not of infection, but of immunity. How would, could we test for presence of neutralizing antibodies without having a BSL-3 facility? Well, it happened to be there is such a test now. And in partnership with another company, we're developing a saliva test as well as a blood test that will look at the interaction between RBD and, 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 and um, ACE2 and creating a competitive um, inhibition test. And now we can test for immunity. So the ideal would be you give a sub-Q injection, get N plus S, hopefully get T cells, get B cells, take an oral tablet, get immunity, and then every two months spit into a tube and measure neutralizing antibodies. And if your antibodies are down, pop a capsule um, <laughs> of, of the same um, uh, system. That's what we're developing. There's one more wrinkle to this, and, 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 and uh, Adam hit on it. Okay. What is the intracellular, what ca ca captures intracellular proteins? Well, in cancer, there's a protein called brachyurea that is intracellular, not on the surface. Yet we've been able to actually generate CD4 and CD8 T cells to brachyuri. How is that possible? Well, two ways. And this is the way we're going to present the, again um, in this paper coming out this week. In order to take an intracellular protein and make an, an, a, a, a T cell and, and even a B cell to it, an antibody to it, because as these viruses die, you'll, they'll express even these proteins, is you need to take this intracellular protein called N. And this is why this N is such a crazy protein. It's an amazing protein. It, it, it sits inside the cytoplasm and doesn't go to the endosomes. And why is that important? If it doesn't go to the endosomes, it doesn't get processed, and it can then be expressed on the what we call MHC2 and be processed to get CD4s. So we've tricked it. We've taken the N, and we've created what I call the endosomal transport system construct onto it. And we've driven the N into the endosomes and the lysosomes so that it gets processed. And when it gets processed, it then gets express on MHC2, now we're driving CD4 cells. And when it gets processed, the antibodies we're driving is Th1. So now the ideal vaccine is a Th1 that you can give often, repeatedly, cell-mediated immunity, urinary immunity, and mucosal immunity, and that you can monitor through the cold chain orally with an easy test.